Let's check over episode 19 and my full form thoughts after I have like a day after processing it. So what's going on? Subaru cucks Rem. Rem is perfectly fine with being cuck queen. And who am I to judge Rem for her happiness? But I feel like this is something is fucked up here, man. After that, it's basically trying to go back and negotiate with everybody. But what I did not realize is how in advance he's prepared, right? Because he learned from last time. I thought that he'd be too upset. I thought that he'd be too upset to even figure out what Anastasia told him, what Cruz told him. Priscilla's lesson was not really much of a lesson. It's just kind of stand up for yourself and she'll entertain you maggots, you know, dancing for her. But this time we came prepared, right? Even before we got here, Anastasia and Russell Fellows is already outside and they were waiting for their time to show up, right? Subaru didn't really give them a time, so it's up to them to show up. So Anastasia still got a little bit on us, but regardless, everything went well. And the biggest thing here, right? I didn't even realize there was mention of like special rocks of Roswell's mansion that they could mine. Apparently in the light novel or the source material, they had a separate section where we got Roswell's permission. But to me, it looked like a Subaru was just saying, yo, you can just uh, take all these fucking mines uh, without having any permission from the clan, which I thought was hilarious. And then we got so lucky here. Subaru did not make the connection with Otto when Otto said there was a subjugation force with the previous sword saint that the white whale killed, right? And then if you made the connection of sword saint, Right? We're trying to figure out the incentives of how do we get Krush to help us, right? Sword Saint, Von Austria, Wilhelm is married into Von Austria. I didn't really think that they would be looking for revenge. I thought that because this is something so shocking that, I don't know, they'd want to leave it be or they might be running away from it. But no, they've been trying to hunt down the white whale for 400 years, right? Not just the Von Austria family. In 400 years, the white whale has rained terror upon us. And now we got bailed out. Wilhelm has a split, like a actual good reason to help us out we see his like hockey like the aura bro this part his aura was like leaking and the space was getting distorted it's so sick and now they have a reason to actually help us out but then it's just like okay you gave us a reason but how do you know it's gonna show up so you know how i said before how the regression power is nerfed by having people be suspicious of specific details of events that's going to happen in the future. Subaru can't just say, in three days near the Flugel tree, White Will will show up. It's like, how do you know that? Well, I have this meteor, right? I have this meteor. <laughs> and with the meteor, we just cap. Because, like, Krush knows we're not lying. The meteor tells us of a specific time, and yeah, that time is when we met the White Whale. So it's not like we're really lying, right? Everything what we're saying is pretty much true. And Crucius' divine protection of having these like wind spirits show up when he lies didn't happen. So even if it's like so suspicious, Crucius is like, you know what? Fuck it. Fine. Then Anastasia shows up with Russell Fellows for even more incentive of helping outright. It's like in everyone's benefit to try and help out because trade routes are blocked due to the white whale. You know, in merchant tree, delivering good, distribution of goods, it's very important. So this aligns with everyone's favor. Russell Fellows is gonna get our Nokia flip phone though. It's kind of sad, right? It's kind of sad. A half truth is not a lie. Nah, 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 stop it with, with those fucking bullshit ass fucking arguments. You don't, don't do this armchair fucking psychology with me. Nah, 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 nah. A half-truth is not a lie. A half-truth is a truth, right? It might not be completely truthful, but it's not a lie. That what she's detecting is a lie. A half-truth does not qualify for that. It's sad that our Nokia flip phone is finally getting nerfed. Russell Fellas is going to take it. Little does he know that this fucking battery life is going to die out soon. But nah, dude. It's still at fucking three bars. How the hell is it still at three bars? I guess he doesn't really use it. But I thought even in maintenance mode, it would die down by now. But goddamn, that lithium battery that's in Russell Fellows' fucking, you know, uh, the Nokia flip phone. Someone's got to study that shit. Also, isn't it possible that they could figure out a way to, like... All you have to do is take the battery out, right? Even if you don't have an actual charger, isn't there different ways? If you understand basic chemistries, electrodes and all these different shit, oxidization and reductions and stuff, could you not, like, put this in some sort of chemical compound, the battery, I mean, and, like, juice it? There must be some way to do it. 
magic exists in this world. I refuse to believe that they cannot figure out a way to juice the fucking battery without having like an actual modern adapter here. And then what happens? This part was really cool. This part was really sick. And also, even though we might be able to make the connection that obviously Subaru can figure out the incentive of Von Austria and Wilhelm with the White Whale, Subaru himself didn't know that he was Von Austria, did he? I swear to God, they mentioned he was Von Austria when they first met. Did they not say that? When they first met in the beginning of this arc, when the carriage arrived, Subaru was raising up the old man. And did he not say he was Von Austria at that point? Regardless, we get bailed out here with the White Whale. He says that he offers such gratitude on the level of Krush. And I'm like, oh my god. And yeah, he says, my family name is Austria. Right? He got, he's married into the family. Subaru himself may not have known it because they mentioned something else. The former sword saint is Theresia von Austria, my wife. So I'm still going with the headcanon. Until it's confirmed, we don't really know. Until the anime specifically tells me. But I'm going to assume Reinhardt is like Wilhelm's... Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Wilhelm is Reinhardt's grandfather, and Theresia is like Reinhardt's grandmother. I don't think it makes sense for them to be like mom and dad because he looks too old. Or maybe it's a totally different branch and has nothing to do with Reinhardt, and Reinhardt is like a different main bloodline. I I'm not really sure. Until we get more of the backstory, we, we won't know. Maybe next episode they'll have more Wilhelm and, you know, backstory. He's such a good person because later on we even figure out that like dude literally married into the family and became a sword saint and attained the, de like, the title sword demon on behalf of his wife because she never wanted to take up the sword, but the sword chose her. That's very romantic. Like, becoming so good with sword, becoming such a Giga Chad, earning that sword saint title, like stripping it from, from her because she never wanted to be it. That is so cool. Felix seems to really like Subaru. There has been that many moments with Felix and Subaru. I'm not really sure exactly what Felix sees in Subaru just yet. Even in the beginning with the, uh, there were some cute like moments. Remember when like, Felix and Rem were quote-unquote helping uh, Subaru and uh, healing the gate. And there's like moments where they're both just like <laughs> running a train on him. I'm not completely sure what Felix sees in Subaru. Maybe... Uh, there are times when Felix is disappointed in different runs, of course, because we fuck up. But I don't remember enough interactions for Felix to really be this like, I don't know, positive towards Subaru. But Felix is very... How do I say? Eccentric? Seems like he reads the room. Understand that Subaru is a unique character and is kind of playful. That's why this is just like a, a a professional positive relationship. I'm not sure. The dragon here. Very interesting how the land dragon we pick is the most prideful one, right? Co Again, you have this whole reoccurring theme of Subaru's pride, which I'm not sure if that is his only seven elements. I think that there is plenty of different sins exhibited by Subaru. Right? I think a lot of people say, like, the last uh, episode where if Rem agreed to take Subaru away, that would be like a slothful one where he kind of like runs away from all his problems. He's very slothful. In the first one, I think that might be pride because he threw away his pride to ask Reinhardt for help. We've seen him be angry a lot. Have we seen gluttony? I'm not really sure. But I think that the pride is a reoccurring theme for Subaru and this land dragon is a breed known for its extreme pride, yet it submits itself to Subaru. What does that mean? Does that mean prideful people um, respect other people based on their pride? The only other example that I see from the anime is Priscilla. And obviously she's very prideful. And she enjoys it when you're kind of standing up for yourself and being a little bit prideful yourself. I'm not completely sure if that's respect, but at the very least, it's some, some sort of entertainment where she likes to see people like struggle and it's like a show for entertainment. But it seems like if you match pride with pride, it, it works out decently. And this is kind of sad that Rem is literally competing with the land dragon now for Subaru's affection. The pecking order... Remember, Petra is still in the game. Like, Petra showed affection to Subaru. I will never forget that. So there's Petra, Rem... This land dragon, Emilia. <laughs> and Rem might be like dead last. I would hope that like Subaru loves Rem more than fucking Petra and this goddamn land dragon. But like, this competition scene, it's funny, but also fucking sad. Uh, we meet this guy named Ricardo. This guy is like the commander of the mercenary team. 
So Mimi is second in command, meaning this guy is the captain. He seems like a really good guy. He was going around trying to relieve everyone of their anxiety, right? As we go into the battle by being a little bit of a clown. So I like him a lot. Krush has a really cool battle suit. I wish that Priscilla showed up, but it is what it is. Krush has a really cool, uh, cool knight armor. And then uh, <laughs> Krush literally says like... No, there, there's a part where the shit that Subaru says... Right underneath the white whale's nose, right? All the different strategy, because like the strat is for him to go in, use I can, uh, uh, I, I can like regress using return by death. It spikes AoE taunt, then we're a bait, then everyone else can do it. But Krush doesn't really understand how this shit works. And she's like, this is so frustrating. You're not lying. This is fucking insane. The boomer army? I might have been a little bit too mean. I might have been a bit too mean to the boomer army. But listen, when these dudes show up in the beginning, Without no context, right? I don't understand their lore and history. It just looks like a fucking boomer squad. They literally came out of the retirement house. These dudes are people that lost their family, loved ones, friends, right? In the past due to the white whale and they've survived and they've harbored a grudge. Everyone here, there is such animosity and grudge towards the white whale. I never knew because like we didn't really know about the white whale until... I think Rem mentioned it, that one run where we were already too late to go on the main road. Therefore, we had to go all the way around and therefore we arrived at the engine very late. But the White Whale for 400 years has been terrorizing the kingdom of Lugunica. And there's so many people here just like all uniting based off of this one goal. And it's kind of crazy how well this is working out. Like, I thought it was impossible. I thought that shit, we need to somehow get powerful allies. But how do we do that? It was in front of us the entire time. This one goal, united with the white whale. They say that the enemy of your enemy is like a friend. Maybe it doesn't really apply at best in this situation, but... It's crazy how an entire army, not just Crucia's army, other people from retirement are coming out. Anastasia's personal army. Everyone is coming out to meet the white whale. It's so hype. It's just, I wish that Priscilla also showed up. I wanted to see Al fight. But Priscilla and Al... I've never seen Priscilla's army. Now, I've never seen Krush's army until today, right? Until today, we've only seen Krush have like Wilhelm and Felix. So I never really realized we had all these armies. The only other people we've seen with an army is just, you know, Anastasia. So maybe Priscilla has her own uh, set of men that are all just fucking masochists that just wants to get whipped by Priscilla. Who knows? Actually, that'd be hilarious if it's literally just a bunch of masochistic piggies that are all simply for Priscilla. And then here, fantastic speech by Krush. Her demeanor, her charisma as a ruler, it's amazing, man. Krush, like, again, we haven't even seen her fight yet, but like her entire presence, her way of ruling, I would be comfortable with her being a ruler. Her entire platform is also Lugunica for the people, not for the dragon. Let's get rid of the covenant. Let's stop being indebted to people. Now, I'm not completely sure if that's a good idea. We don't know enough about the dragon to understand if it's a net positive or a negative for the kingdom. But I would vote for Krush. I would 100% vote for Krush. She's a very reasonable, logical person. Very good with diplomacy. She's also very hot, which is a plus. Yeah, for sure I'd vote for Krush. Anastasia, we talked about how the theme of capitalism rights at the end when, you know, I, I have no doubt that Anastasia can bring up the GDP up of our country, Alubinica, but... In the late stage of capitalism, as you see now, what do you see? The wealth gap, right? The rich get richer, the poor gets poorer. Just because the country might be rich doesn't mean the people are rich. So if Anastasia runs in a platform and is actually generous to lift people out of poverty, that would be nice to vote for. But if it's, you know, basically just late stage capitalism, then that's just... I mean, if you're already rich, yeah, you're going to benefit. For most, most of the people are going to suffer, right? Priscilla, her entire platform is... Hey, maggots, just believe me. Everything will work out. Trust me. That doesn't really win my vote. You know what I mean? There's not a specific thing that she mentioned that I'd be really, <laughs> I don't know, confident about. Like, she's basically hinging on her luck and her ability for being in an advantageous situation all the time. And maybe that will work. Maybe the Dragon Kingdom of Lugunica will literally be that advantageous. Or, again... Who is it advantageous for? The ruler or the people? Just because Priscilla is in a good spot 
just because things work out for her doesn't necessarily mean that the people are going to be you know receiving that same level of positivity so i probably would not vote for priscilla let's think about amelia amelia huh what is her entire platform equality her entire platform is based on equality which is nice right it's a very uh, social aspect right social justice I don't think social justice really pays for the bills, but if we really think about from a perspective of getting rid of discrimination and uplifting everyone so that everyone can have their own uh, representation and inclusivity, and you don't have to live in, uh, I don't know, discrimination, then maybe other people can have better jobs, right? Without this uh, stereotypes of fucking different uh, races and species being superior, maybe if you even out the playing field, there's better opportunities uh, for the kingdom, for every citizen, therefore it can be uplifted out of poverty. I just did a lot of mental gymnastics to really reason as to how this social, you know, this social uh, justice could help the kingdom. It's a nice thought. It's really idealistic. I'm not sure if it's practical, but it's nice. And felt? <laughs> it's just pure anarchy, right? Felt, felt is just pure anarchy, right? What, what is felt? It's just... Fuck this kingdom. Everything's trash. Let's burn the status quo down and then build it back up. Now, it sounds good until you realize what happens after you burn everything down. This is a very naive and an amateur way of politics where you're just upset at the status quo. So you say, let's burn everything down. You think that this is going to help, but I guarantee you, you're going to be in a worse position than what you're dealing with right now. You think that it's bad enough that there's a set, you know, separate side of the ghettos in that where Felt's living in? I bet you everything is gonna be a fucking ghetto if we just burn shit down. You need to have an actual plan, right? You need to have an actual plan. And the only one with an actual plan seems to be Krush and Anastasia. So those two get my vote, but everyone else, I'm not too sure, man. After that, we get to see more of the cat army. There's Mimi. We know Mimi, right? Mimi loves Borgar, second in command. And then there's this other kid, Hetaro, their brother and sister. It's kind of still crazy to think that they're that strong. Maybe we will see in the battle against the White Whale exactly how strong they are. I need to see Mimi in action, man. I need to see... I'm most excited to see Mimi and Wilhelm in action. Like, how strong is Wilhelm? If he is, you know, the former sword demon uh, being that stripped away the title for a short time, that dude's gotta be OP, right? Even if he's retired, it's got to be insane. Mimi, for sure, I want to see what he's like. Unless we just see Mimi just get killed. You think they would do that? <laughs> just brutalize this fucking Shota and Lolly? Just kill them in the most gruesome way to show how real this world is? Nah, I believe in Mimi's power. And then Ricardo here going out to, you know, calm everyone down. And then we get to the tree. And there's a really good moment here <laughs> where people's names are apparently carved onto the tree. And I thought, oh, maybe Rem X, you know, Subaru can be carved into the tree. But no, <laughs> motherfucker just wanted EMT carved into the tree. Then there's a really good moment here where, uh, you know, Subaru is capping about how this is all going to work. He can't tell Rem about the return by death. But Rem knows, right? Rem knows that even if Subaru is not telling her the exact truth, even if she doesn't know the exact details, she has the overall vibe and she lifts him up. She glazes him more and Subaru starts crying out of happiness, out of someone acknowledging him, right? He has to look away because he doesn't want to show the tears and these are really good moments, man. These are really good moments. And then boom, Wilhelm von Austria. Why is he looking at the flower bed? Because his wife loves the flower bed and we know a flower bed, right? There is a secret spot in uh, the village where we come from in Roswell's domain the place that we took Amelia to the date we should bring you know Wilhelm there and put out like a flower crown on his head he's so in this he, there's something about him is just so good because he's so humble he's so respectful he's such a chivalrous man like I wish that I can grow up to be like Wilhelm if I get to his age he's like aged like fine wine man to this day, I love my wife more than anyone, right? She never wanted to wield a sword, but the sword chose her because of she just born with the Von Austria genes, right? And because he loved her more than anything else, he wanted her happiness. 
he took it from her. That is so romantic. It is. Like, bro decided to become so strong just for her. That's like more Giga Chad than what is, what is it called? You know when Roche did it, the principal was like a fat chud, pathetic loser. But in order to like win the hearts of the vice principal, sorry, not the principal, president, 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 right? And the whole election campaign, you know, looking at like his entire growth, like it is so cool to see Wilhelm be like this. But he's still so sad. I'm so sad about this. And remember, this entire motivation to kill the White Will comes from this revenge. I don't think he's really an Avenger, a being that's, a, that's gonna throw everything away for the sake of revenge, but this is more like closure, man. <sighs> By the way, misconception, I don't really care. I'm literally reading the subtitles and seeing what the subtitles is saying. He said that he took the title away. I'm gonna believe that the title is taken away. What the fuck do you want me to think? Be schizo and just read a random fucking Twitch comment and say, yep, you're definitely right. Until the show fucking proves me otherwise, I'm gonna go with the show, bro. This is an anime only, not a fucking light novel or a web fucking comic, uh, a web novel uh, review. And this part is kind of worrisome. There's a lot of death flags being set too. I'm like, ooh, I don't want a death flag for Wilhelm. If he dies in this battle, I could see like him dying while killing the white whale too. That would be like a poetic ending to his character arc. But I don't want him to die. I want him to show up. I want him to be like Subaru's coach to teach him swordsmanship. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm fucking dreaming, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm dreaming. This little fist bump. I guess everyone just kind of understands by instinct how to do like <laughs> a fist bump. But notice how big his hand is compared to Subaru's. Well, what do you comp you know, that's what happens when you compare like like an Isekai Giga Chad like you know a person versus like a Japanese neat. And then Crucia's sword here is kinda cool. There was a moment when she was like grazing this sword. I like to see Crucia in actual battle. And then this section with the ringtone was amazing, bro. This ringtone in the beginning, it started off as like a generic ringtone. So I'm like, okay. But the more it started to play with the suspense of when is the white whale gonna show up, it started to get a little bit more horrifying. The casual happy-go-lucky themes of the ringtone combined with this atmosphere of... What's the word? Again, just like, uh... What's the, what's the word? You're like expecting something to happen. The suspense, right? And then this ringtone gets louder and louder. And as you see the white whale at the top, and then you see the distortions of the black screens, and the ringtone gets louder and louder, and then it shows up and everyone is frozen. This section was so sick because everyone was like petrified. No one could move. The whale comes under and then it smiles at us. This whale is so fucking cheeky because even when it almost killed Subaru and it showed up after it blew him away, it was smiling. It was smiling, right? It had this look of like pleasure. Like even right now, it looks like it's looking down on me, right? This fucking whale, I'm like, ooh. It's so, it, it, it looks like it's jeering us in. And when everyone is frozen, when everyone is frozen solid, what happens? Krush tries to say, troops, let's go. Nah, Subaru gets the early lead. Boom, let's fucking go Al Huma first blood baby. And because of the shock and the stupidity, I guess, of how crazy this is, of him just going in. I mean, that was the plan. Everyone else, all right, look at this. A look of terror into a look of relief, right? A look of terror into a look of relief. And we say, everybody, follow these two idiots. Everyone's confidence is good. The anxiety is mellowed out, and the battle begins, man. And the subjugation against the white whale. Oh my god. This is a full-on fucking raid, and I cannot wait. And remember, there was also dialogue about how potentially it could not just be the white whale that we have to fight. Other cult members may show up, so be expecting that. And that's it from me. I'll see you on the next episode.